important to keep in mind that Shange's work is doing something radically different than anything else that is going on in that moment in that it is asking us to consider how the body might serve as a liberatory force in the beautiful black woman's body more specifically might serve as a liberatory force and a critique of and an expansion of the black arts movement period. Developing a poetics that allows one in fact expects one to think about difference in so many different ways, right? Think about race, think about gender, sexuality, you know, nationality, um, while thinking about, you know, poetry and, and, and dance and movement um, all in one. She fulfills simultaneous identities, and so she's artist, poet, writer, dancer, dramaturg, and there's no separation of all of those things. One of the phrases that comes up in her book, Sassafras, Cypress, and Indigo, is art is everything you do, make something. For me, my act of writing poetry is this ritual of doing what I think I can do, 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 and then at some point the accumulation takes me to what I never would have even thought was there to do, whether I could do it or not, you know, like that, that's the miracle of the practice, and I think that she makes it so visible and, and also just accessible, like someone could imagine talking to themselves and having the miracle that happens in her poetry. And so the craft is so effective because she does it so carefully and the rhythm of it allows people to internalize it. I mean, I think it's magic. I really think of her as a magician. I think of her poems as spells. She's really asking us to think about how we might understand the comportment, the language, the joy that is made in communion with black women's bodies and their voices, and how we might understand that as once again, um, a way to extend the desires and the freedom dreams of the black arts movement period while not being pinned down by the patriarchal structures that seem central to the imagining of black community in the 1970s. And so in many ways, she's a vanguard of her time and some of her concerns, I think a lot of her concerns, continue to haunt us in the 21st century. And so it's instructive to look back at the choreo poem and her work more broadly and think about how she continues to give us instruction for how we might confront some of the social issues that continue to plague American culture and black culture specifically. She says that the, our experiences are not monolingual. And when she says that, when she says our, she's talking about peoples of African descent across disciplines, right? Across the world, across transnationally. I think that's amazing because for me, it inspires me to go, okay, wait, well, what was happening when she was writing? And she's talking about Mozambique and she's talking about Angola. What was happening? You know, okay, no, what, it, it is an encouragement to know what she's talking about. When wanting to render what she calls against the white man's language, where her pen is a machete, and thus I think her interest in the slash in all of her work is that she's trying to cut across and make a space clear a way to challenge the ways in which whiteness is not seen as the universal or normative subject, but rather in doing elisions with her works and her words, leaving words out, changing the was, the s to a z, is a way of really trying to show in form how difference enacts itself. There is this emphasis on the poetic quality of vernacular language in black culture more broadly. And so Shange often draws our attention to that quality through the figuration, through you know, the use of um, the turn of a phrase, the ways in which the characterization is drawn out of the language itself. She translates different experiences precisely by an incorporation of different voices, whether it's you see the, the, the literal um, markings of language on the page. So whether that's a national language or an incorporation of Spanish, for example, whether it's apostrophes, whether it's um, vernacular, it's all different things. And just playing with, you know, different representations on a page. I think that she, even doing that is an, it's an emphasis on, yes, we understand that this is a written culture and that there is value placed on the written, but we come from an oral tradition. She sees the voice as um, an effect of the body, as a political tool, um, but and as a poetic sort of instrument. 
Um, and, you know, she's sort of unparalleled in the way that she brings each of those different sort of, you know, facets of voice together. When she says, give me a poem, she's very clear to say she doesn't want writing. She thinks of that maybe even all the way back to the Greeks, that the poem should be spoken, that it doesn't live until it's heard on the breath. Hers are preferably um, her community. So that's another challenge in watching her work, is that it hails the reader slash observer participation, that they complete the art, which is a very communal form and also part of her black aesthetic. It's the intersection of the embodied movement alongside of the poetics that really gives us a transformative art form. You can't have for colored girls without the dance, and that's what actually makes it a choreo poem, is that choreographing of the bodies and the breath and the space between the women, um, who are simultaneously highly abstract, as is language itself, and material. And it's that blend of the abstract and the material that, again, I think is a major hallmark of Shange's aesthetic. Her incorporation of both the specific with the general is an amazing accomplishment, and it's not easily realized. In 1976, when the play was originally produced on Broadway, it was unheard of to see black women and different types of black women on the Broadway stage. We sometimes think about language being, or theater pieces, somehow uh, the work solely of the author, and what she does is to kind of release that and really make more space in the dramaturgy for actors, for anyone can play that part and be both in it and working in a figurative way. The ways in which she demonstrates collectivity, even you know through the naming of her characters by colors as opposed to individual figures, asks us to reconsider what it means to have a full incorporation of people's stories into the national fabric. There's this real value for the presence of ancestors, for the connections, especially between women across generations, but between folks across generations, you know, like the, the aunts, the um, chosen uncles, right? The like community, the folk, as it's specifically named in Sassafras, Cypress, and Indigo, are really present. And whether that's, th that's through the musical community or, or what, that's, that's hugely important. So tradition matters as a way for folks to have access to the folk, the living and dead folk, and to have that as a resource for them to be present when they face new age circumstances. These influences, these generations are working upon one another and not in a one way, teleological, always for the future version. She's able to t bring up these subjects that are really painful, incest, violence, rape, while at the same time giving us possibilities for moving past and through them. Finding a way to put something that I see is a set of healing rituals, rituals specifically designed to have the outcome of healing centered around black women and to make that something that could be somehow portable, that could be performed around the country, but then, I mean, for colored girls being performed the way that it is in schools of all levels at this point and um, Shange's poetry being used in that way. I mean, I know I've used it in my community work so many times and it creates in its very structure this ritual space that I think She's the first person that I know of who has done that, especially at the scale that she's done it and with the impact and focusing on black women specifically. There's an ongoing creation of space through the reproduction of her work on college campuses as well as the incorporation of her writing in curriculum. She's a part of the canon in ways that I think critics are continuing to really kind of suss out and, and develop. I mean, you know, what she does with questions of genre, um, what she does with voice, um, you know, um, she has, she's had a tremendous impact on a number of writers who take up the choreo poem as a form in itself. What I do in my community is I invite people to live inside Shange's work with me. That, that's what I invite them to do. So the Indigo Night School, we're like following the rituals that Indigo creates. What is the way to make it a space where we actually get to do the healing work that was possible for me because she did the work of creating those worlds for those black girl characters to live inside of. Right now we have the Sassafras Survival Salon that really is how do we cook together, sing together, weave together, like do what Sassafras did and think about how we transform relationship violence in our communities and in our, in our own lives and in our family histories. Developing a new genre and naming that genre, I think she's, Shange has just in that act 
Shange has done a tremendous uh, work and, and sort of broken tremendous ground for uh, contemporary, you know, writers, writers of color. And again, I think queer writers in particular are drawn to those kinds of forms, partly because of the way Shange is constantly engaged with the relationships between voice and body. You know, and this is this is true in For Color Girls, but it's true in The Daughter's Geography, it's true in Boogie Woogie Landscapes, it's true in uh, in in Betsy Brown and Lillian. It's, I mean, really sort of throughout her ove, the idea that the body and the voice cannot be disentangled. Um, I think that's, that's especially useful for queer writers of color, um, you know, who are writing against several different sort of uh, inscriptions of, of narratives onto the body. I think in the 21st century, what's really important and why her work continues to resonate is because we're in a moment where democratization seems to be being represented through singular figures. And so we have the black president, we have the woman a secretary of state, and there's these singular people who seem to stand in for this idea of a collective democratization, but what Shange draws our attention to is that that type of thinking can be really detrimental, particularly to black women, and that black women's stories always have to be understood in relationship to others and as a collective. It's a place to live, you know, like, and it's a, it's a uh, matrix through which to transform my relationships with all of the people in my community, and it's a language for us to, to grow through. Do you really want to write? Well, you almost got it. <laughs> <laughs> 